G'day guys, Moose here, and this is another Sawdust and Chrome. Today I'm introducing these Adirondack chairs. Um, awesome timber project to do. Um, I won't give you too much detail, because that guy knows what he's doing. Sawdust and Chrome. Sawdust and Chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> This project, I'm going to break it down into three components. Um, we're going to do the legs, uh, front and backs, and kind of the front rail assembly. Um, that gets to a certain point. We're going to do the backs as a, a second component. Um, I've got a couple of cheats. I'm going to leave you guys some plans, but there's a couple of things I like to tweak to make it a bit easier and a little bit more sturdy. We do the backs as a separate unit. And then the third part is I'm going to um, show you how to put them all together, do our armrests, and make sure it's super comfy out in a final sand as well. Um, it's probably only one other thing, but he's the expert on that one. My last point is, we do these out of, tim uh, out of pine. Um, pine I like, it's good in the schools because it's a softer timber to use. To be honest, it's a bit cheaper than the hardwoods, or a lot cheaper than the hardwoods. Um, and it's nicer on our tools. For you guys at home, if you want, you can do them in any timber you want. You can go for the hardwoods. Hardwoods, obviously, it's harder on your tools. Uh, it's a bit harder to sand, but they do last longer and they look beautiful with a good finish on them. Um, that's probably enough from me. Let's get into it. Oh, sorry, one more thing. If you love what we do, please do the likes and subscribes, leave comments, send me pictures of your work. Um, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's go. Hey everyone, Moose here. We're going to get stuck into the chair. Just a reminder, the first section we're going to do, the front legs and the back legs, I'm going to show you how we shape them. Um, we'll go through the measurements. I'll remind you, I'll talk you all the way through it. Just a reminder that it's a, you're a mirror image when you do a pair and I'll show you how to square them up so they're perfect. We'll do this section first. We'll do the back rail as its own component and then once they're together, um, the rest of it comes together nicely. The slats, the seats, um, the armrests and the supports. Um, super easy project to do it. If I can teach high school kids and college kids to do it, I can show you guys. Um, we'll go through it step by step. Um, I will upload some plans. Um, I've tweaked the plans just a little bit. The sizing is exactly the same. I've just tweaked how would they come together. Um, we've done it a few times and this is the easiest way to get kind of a successful result. And it's less fiddly, it's worked out really well. Um, any questions, just hit me up online. I'm, uh, I'll answer them as soon as I can. Um, don't forget your PPE, your earmuffs, your glasses. Um, I'm a fan of the aprons and um, that's it, let's get into it. Oh, and if you like what we're up to, don't forget to do all the clicking. Um, let's go, guys. Back legs. Hey. Front legs, B. Front stretcher, C. Upper back brace, D. This is the back. Time and school bell. This is the back brace E. I'm going to explain this one to you a bit later. I've changed the design to make it a bit, uh, a bit friendlier to use in schools. Lower back brace F. Our corner blocks G. H. These are our backs, um, back slats. I 
I is our seat slats. Seven of those, eight of the backs. We'll get two arm supports out of this guy, Jay. And our final one is K. These are the, um, the armrests, the big arms. From this, we'll build us an awesome chair. Uh, obviously stop, pause the video as much as you need. Um, I'll probably break it into three separate videos as well anyway. Um, maybe that'll make it easier. I've got components A and B here. We're gonna turn, I'm gonna show you how to shape them. Um, depending on what resources you've got, we've got obviously a bandsaw and some sanding equipment here. I'll show you how I use it. Um, depending on what you've got at home, you'll be fine with a jigsaw, um, yeah, hand sanders as well. Um, it might just take a little bit longer, but uh, persist because it's worth the effort. All right, let's go. Sorry, I forgot. I'm a massive fan of, as you get your components together, their shape, they're perfect. Um, give everything a quick sand. Heaps easier to do it now than it is when your chair's together. Um, so that's it, that's my hot tip. First one, let's go. The front legs are easy, nice square things, they're already cut to size. Because I've done this project a few times, um, and in the plans there's a template for you, I've actually cut my own out of a scrap of masonite. Um, so the boys that I teach, um, we just trace this. And I did add some guide holes because we end up county sinking these. It's much easier to counter sink them before uh, when everything's apart. So let's go shape that. I've got a second one to do and we'll get some sanding done. It's easy. With a bit of luck, you do have a drill press of some sort at home. Um, this is our big school one. Um, you can get them in smaller versions, bench top versions. Or if you do need to use just a cordless, that's more than, uh, that's fine. But I do find it a little bit more accurate to use the drill press. Um, I've got my countersunk bit, and I'll, I'll show you how to set it up. But also, once it's set up, I'm gonna leave it because we have to countersink quite a few holes down the track as well. And, um, It'll save a bit of time, so. And I'm countersinking these now because I'm gonna lose my markings if I go sand it. So we'll countersink them, then I'll start sanding. Um, also, if you love the tabletop we've made for it, um, that's a custom one we did here. I'll, I'll, one day I'll do a little video and I'll show you how we made that. Um, really good addition to any drill press. Um, it works really well. All right, let's go. This is the chuck, it's old school. This is the chuck key, and we've got our little um, countersunk bit. You gotta make sure the jaws that come out of the chuck, make sure that they bite on the faces on the countersunk bit. Um, it, make sure it does. Put it in by hand. Now you've got to tighten it up. Just a little. We're only drilling into pine. Um, spin it by hand just to make sure that that is in the center. 
because you can, I've seen um, people do it before, you can actually clamp it in between two of the jaws, not three of the jaws, so the thing will be off center. Uh, when you fire it up, you'll know straight away that it's not quite right. Um, all right. Uh, to set the depth, this is normally what I do. I've got the depth stop, I think, where I want it, but I'm going to check with a scrap piece of wood. The idea is the countersunk it's just a little bit below the surface, so when we put our screws in, our screws should fit, uh, fit a tiny bit below the surface. So that'll be okay. The depth stop on the other side is locked in, so it can't go further than that. Uh, they're such big bits, you should be able to hang on to them. Um, if you have a little person helping you out, um, maybe in an adult will have to hold them for it. Um, Sand, let's go. All right, hot tip number three. Uh, I'm gonna give you a couple pointers about putting the sandpaper onto your sanders. Um, we've got these third sheet sanders, um, good Makita stuff like always. Um, I'll give you a couple of tips with putting the sandpaper on. It will help your sandpaper last a lot longer. Uh, and then after that, it's just boring sanding. All right. We're lucky enough at school, we've got these downdraft tables, so I might as well use them because we've got them. But depending on your situation at home, um, make sure you do it outside. Wear your dust masks if you need it. All right, paper. I'm a fan of, I cut more than I need. Fold it over at one end, clamp it, again at the other end, fold it over, I want you to clamp it so it's double thickness, but I also want you to make sure There's very little flex in the bottom of the paper. It should be nice and flat, nice and tight, and double layered on the ends. That'll help it last a lot longer. Sanding's done. When we put together the front and back legs, this is super important, yet they have to be square. Um, the easiest way I found, and I'll show you, is to use a big square table as a reference. Um, glue and screw. Um, pick the glue that's appropriate, depending on where your chair's gonna end up. Um, this is a good exterior PVA glue. Um, works fine. Um, we've been using it for years here at school. And, just a hot tip, and I, any excuse to go buy some tools, these little Makita, um, depending on who you talk to, um, torque drivers or impact drills, um, are just the best. This, with my normal cordless, um, th there's nothing we can't do. And these things last forever. Nice, light, it's, it's brilliant. Um, we bought a couple a few years ago, and since then, like we've just been buying a couple every year, because the the, the students here work so well, and um, within reason, they're, um, they're pretty simple to use. Um, let's go. Before we can, into it, can get into it, we need to make a couple marks on here. Um, this is the guide for where the front of our um, back leg, I guess, needs to start. On your plans, page 42, in the second uh, diagram number two, it tells you what it wants. 
Grab them both. Have a quick look, see what inside outside bits of potentials. Um, we're going to mark on the inside, so if there's anything you don't like, make sure it's facing up. On the plans, you need to come up 385. in from that edge, 25. 25 and 25. So they're the, ins they're the inside faces. And our leg is going to match up there and there. Ah, uh, grab. I've got some quick, quick grip clamps here. I'm going to clamp this leg. Using my table as a guide, right on the corner. So it's flush with the bottom, it's flush with the edge. Uh, and if I use this edge as my other square reference, uh, it will be perfect. Line up that corner. And that'd be perfect. Um, I don't mind if you've got clamps, use as many as you want. Um, I do tell the kids we need a little bit of glue on it. Match that corner. Match the base with the edge of the table, square. That'll be square there. Please be real fussy. Make sure it's perfect. Oh, screw size. I've seen it happen a few times. Please don't use screws that are too big. Make sure you've got the kind of the longer screw you can without punching through the other side of the timber. So these are 32s. 32s, 35s might be just pushing it, um, but 32s work well. So, I'm going to double check. I like where that is. I like where that is. Put one in. Still like where it is, double check, because it will have moved. Oh, and this bit of timber is just so I can keep the leg level, because it's the same thickness as everything else. So I like that. Still good. So my screws are just below the surface. I'm flush here, I'm flush with the edge, so that means that is a nice square joint. Um, oh, cordless or drilling. Um, I will do a video, if I'm clever enough, a link will pop up now. Um, just some basics, some DIY about using the drills. Um, hot tip is, as long as you're Drill is more or less in line with your shoulder, whether you're vertical or you're above it. Um, then you can use your body weight behind it. Um, you usually will be fine. Um, that's perfect. Uh, I've got to grab, go grab a rag.
Just a damp, slightly damp rag. Don't put too much water on. Be really fussy with your cleaner. Because uh, you'll get caught out later on when you oil it or if you paint it. Um, and the oil doesn't soak in. So that's perfect. I'll just leave that to dry for a little bit and we'll do the other side. So don't forget, this is a mirror image. So, where you want to work. On the other end of the table. Do you know why you never see elephants hiding in trees? It's because they're so good at it. Rate that gag. Leave a comment. It's been about half an hour, so I hope you went and had a smoke go. Um, front rail. Sorry. We're going to put on this part. This guy. Um, it's super easy. Um, that's all I got. Let's go. Oh, on the plans, it does tell you pay. Just saw it. Oh, same page, 42, uh, number three, diagram three. So you've got to come down 25 and up 25. Make sure your, your kind of the width you come in is a centimeter, or nine mil to be exact. So it needs to hit the center of this. Uh, I'll show you, we'll explain it when we do it. Same again, be a little bit fussy, so pick which is the better side. And that can be the outside. So you're coming down 25, come up 25. This bit that you come in, I want you to be real fussy. I like to yeah. use your bench vise. Hopefully, you've got one. Um, it's just so you've got a few more hands. So we want to go halfway. So halfway is about there. Which is about there. So it should work out that it's about a centimeter. Yep. Please be fussy with this bit. Be back in a sec, I'm gonna go counter sunk these. You don't need to watch me do that. Counter sunk, sanded. Um, I'm gonna use screws a little bit longer, just because where they're going, I can have longer screws, so I might as well, a little bit more strength. Um, again, I want you to glue it. Put a little bit on both edges. So for this one, it's really important that like, 
This edge is the top. So make sure the top of your rail, your front rail, matches up with the top of this section just here. So they've got to be kind of flush with each other. Get someone to hold it if you need to. Make sure you're hard up against that edge. Get rid of your glue. So we should have a good joint. Sorry, can you see it? Uh, good joint in here, and it's flush with the top here. Now the other one. This is when it's handy to have a second pair of hands. Let's see how we go. Again, make sure you're flush with the top. Yeah, that work. Magnetic tips are a good idea. I'll show you how you can magnetise what you got. Be fussy, sort out your glue. Um, and that's it for the front rail. Everyone's doing really well. If you've gotten to this point, and it's pretty flat on all four legs, you're doing well. Um, that's exactly how it should be. You're in a good place. We're, from here, we kind of deviate from the plan a little bit. I'm going to put in a couple um, support blocks and that kind of keeps this thing nice and safe for a while. Um, then we'll move on to the, the, the backrest. Alright, let's go. With the corner blocks that we put in, I'm going to show you, I mark them out just a tiny bit different. Um, I think because it works better for the screws going across the grain. Um, I'm not too close to the ends and not too kind of, it's not on a right angle. I like to split the difference. Um, for this section, we'll just countersink them by hand. Um, I'll show you how it's done. All right, corner blocks. Coming 40 from both ends. Need a mark in the center. You can eyeball it, but um, this doesn't have to be silly accurate. So what I mean is, if I go right angle from that point, and a 45 from that point, I actually want to split the difference. I want to come through here. I think over the years, the screws seem to like it better, the glue likes it better, and um, we've had less kind of tear out because we're too close to any of the ends. Sliding bevel. Set it to where you need it. It's 
So it's that one, that one, and I've already prepared one. Um, like I said, you have to freehand countersink these. Easy to do. Just whack them in the vise. And use these lines as your guide to help you line it up. And it's perfect, and this is super critical, you drill your countersink bit until it just pokes through. And then with the 40 screws we use, the 40, um, 40 length screws we use, that will work out perfect. So when we glue these up, I won't have any screws poking out the outside of the chair. Keep everything under your shoulder. Show you what I mean when I want it upright. So that line there is nice and upright. So if I just hold this below my shoulder, keep this nice and upright. Should be perfect. Now if you're super fussy, you can sand the lines off these. But to be honest, where they're going, no one's going to see them. Again, glue. Anywhere in the centre is perfect. And if you want, you can, you can clamp them on the angle. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Just till it pulls pulls up tight. Um, that's the whole front assembly ready to go. Um, it'll dry in plenty of time while we work on the on the backrests. Um, so I reckon it's time for another smoker. Well, if you're hardcore like me, I'm gonna go get a cup of tea. Let's go. Sorry, I forgot one more. You can't go. You have your smoker yet. Do the other two blocks. We need them later on. It's exactly the same. Um, you've got all the gear. You might as well use it. All right. All right, we're back. Um, first section's done. We're dominating life right now. Now we're gonna do the backrest. Um, it's not tricky, but you have to get it right. There's a bit of marking, up, marking out to do. Um, I'll show you how. Um, the glue up's not hard, it's just fiddly. Um, it's a good one to do with a mate, um, or ideally with a little helper. Um, whatever gets the kids into the garage, I'm a fan of. And that's it, let's go. All right, for this bit, 
Um, the measurements have to be perfect. All the slats are 900 long and they're 60 wide. Has to be 60. Can't be a little bit bigger or smaller. Um, these guys are the exact size as they're meant to be. Please go off the plans, don't deviate with this section. Um, nice sharp pencil, got my square. And a shout out to a good mate of mine. Um, Watto gave me a box of random sized spaces and I've got a heap of these six mil ones which are perfect for this job. Um, ideally, if you can get a hold of something six mil wide, a bit of ply or whatever, cut up a heap of spaces, um, saves you a lot of hassles. All right, so on the plan, I'm gonna do this one first. This is the back support, the one down the very bottom, underneath. Um, you come down 25, come up 25, give yourself a line. So that's where our screws will end up. Um, on the plan, you come in 60, then you've got your six mil space. And you do that all the way along, 60, 6, 60, 6, 60. And you should finish exactly with 60 on the far end. I'm a fan of giving myself kind of only the information I need. So. Because where we're screwing, I only need to centre. So of that 60, I only need that and this. I only need to know where I need to drill, where I need to countersink. So I'll mark it out. Um, you'll, you'll just watch this and fast forward. It's not that exciting. For the top brace, centre it in your board. So gap same, the gap same, and transfer these up.
Same deal. I've got to go counter sink them, then I'm going to go sand them. Um, I'll be back ready to go. Yes, killing it. When I was a young fella, I didn't really care about beards back then, but as I got older, it really started to grow on me. <laughs> All right, you know what to do. Rate it out of 10, leave us a comment. All right, let's go, we've got work to do. Ready to go. Let's do, I'll show you the glue up. From here we actually deviate from the plan a fair bit. Um, like I was saying, I like to do these components separately. Um, I'll show you how we've done it. We've been doing this for a few years now and it's heaps easier and less fiddly. Um, and we've had a better success rate with the, with the students here at the school. Um, you're gonna need a sash clamp. Um, it makes the job heaps easier and um, helps keep everything where you want it, keeps it square. And I'm sure I've mentioned it a few times, any excuse to go buy more tools, I'm a fan of. If anything, if you finish this project and you've got an awesome chair and a bucket load more tools, that's a massive win-win for me. Um, let me know how you go too. Uh, if I haven't said it for a little while and you love what we're up to, please let me know. Click the buttons and whatnot. Um, all right, let's go. We'll glue this section up. All right, like I've done in the past, I'm going to use the back of the bench as my guide. We're going to do the bottom first. So, quickly chuck these in. I'm going to clamp the first one. Just kind of to the edge of the bench. This is going to go on the bottom. So they all need to slide up a bit. And you do need I want it all flash with the base. So that's about right. So with the clamp, don't do your clamp too tight. Make sure it stayed flush down the bottom. And if it's good, the edges of this should be pretty close to the edges of what you've got going here. That'll work. Make sure you grab the right... Make sure you got the correct screws. Because we change from the 30s to the 40s a little bit, or you might have even longer than the 40s, don't get it wrong. A little bit of glue. Please make sure you glue all your components. Makes it so much stronger. Make 
sure you're happy where it is. Put one in. You're happy, do the next one. Now with these screws, make sure you're putting um, a good amount of weight behind them all. We don't want gaps. And when I say gaps, I mean gaps between this board and the slats. You'll see them. If you're unsure about using the drill, um, and I haven't mentioned it already, the link, um, there's a video, I've done it, oh, I will do a video if I'm organized. Um, basics on using the drills. Super easy, once you get your head around it, they're the best. Uh, can I undo the clamp? You can get rid of half of these. Clean your blue up. Super important. When you're doing the top one, you have to flip the board over. This one goes about there. Now, I'm going to clamp it just to hold it for me. Now, there is in the plan. A measurement that tells you where that has to go. It is on page 44, picture 11. It's 770 from the bottom to the top of it. 770. Uh, ruler. Six, seven, seven. Seven, seven. So this one just has to be centered. So if you're going well, it should be about a centimeter in from both ends. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a fan of putting pencil mark all over your whole job if you don't need it. I've only got a little mark there, a little mark here, and a little mark on this side so I can centre it. Um, don't draw all over it, it's just more sanding you've got to do later. Bit of glue. Line this edge up.
Make sure you put your sla the, the top rail on the right side. I've had kids put it on this side. Um, don't do that, I don't, it's not a great idea. Uh, once you're happy, go for it. Oh, hot tip. If you find when you're putting the screws in and it's not pulling up nice and tight, use one of your spacers. You can pop it underneath, just here, and it will help. So you can keep moving it along. Last bit is, it's up to you how fussy you want to be because the glue gets in between the slats. Um, I've got a little bit of glue here that was on the bench. Um, be nice and fussy. Next bit we'll do, actually, let it dry for about half an hour because then we're going to do the curve and then we're going to put the support for the armrest on it. Um, I reckon it must be lunch time. All right, see you in a bit. All right, it's been half an hour. This is dry enough to continue with. I want to put the curve on, the curve that's on the top. Uh, yeah, the curve for the top. Um, again, I'm a fan of the templates. Um, so I've got a whole heap of random curves, um, different radiuses, um, but this one's perfect. So I'm just going to trace it on. Perfect. Um, you have to do this bit first, because after we put the, the, the brace on for the armrest, um, I lose the flat working area that I can um, successfully bandsaw the top. Um, bandsaw, jigsaw, it won't matter. Um, I'll use our bandsaw. Um, and then we've got a nice belt sander in there, and I'll use that to do the top. And um, and depending on what sanders you got, um, go for it. Again, whenever we sand anything, when you're finished, if your hands like it, it means um, you've done well. Alright, let's go. Alright again, this is where the plan deviates still. Instead of on their plan, they've got a really small kind of back brace armrest support. I found it far easier to use something nice and chunky. 
So this is a bit of 40, uh, it was 40 by 40, cut on, oh, what angle is it? I'll chuck it up now. Um, we've had more success with this, um, and it's a lot stronger. I, I prefer a bigger, chunkier support for the armrest than, than the lightweight one. And I like I've got a, bit of, a bigger surface to glue on. But on the plan, oh, first of all, make sure your top is the top. So it should be a nice right angle. That's the bottom. This is the top. And that's the angle we cut. That's the one that goes on the back. On the plan, uh, 44, um, picture 11. Um, it says to come up 445, and it's kind of got, no, no, it, it, it explains it on the diagram, but I want you to come up from the bottom 400, and that'll be where this bottom edge goes. Um, we have to do that first. Four hundred. And what I want you to do is hold it exactly where it's meant to go, and then I want you to use I want you to have a look at where the center of it is, and that's going to be the nicest area to screw through. So that's the mark I need on the front side. The 400 just here is all I need on the back side. So that's around to here. That's about 2 9. 2 9. Give yourself a line. And that's where all the screws are going to go. That's where. I'll show you. That's where these screws are going to live. So that's the front. Obviously, this is the back. And um, it works out really well. This part I'll mark out. Um, you've got to countersink this with a cordless drill no matter what. But it's nice and easy. Um, I'll show you. Fast forward. These got to be in the center. So remember, all these should be thirty should be in the center. Do these nice and even. I've got my 290, I've got my 30s, so everything's in the center. Drill so it's flat and try to make your countersunks nice and uniform, especially in this one because this is the front, this is stands out. I'm going to go quickly sand that line off.
So that's good. That's good, but it's got to be in the center. Um, I will add the exact dimensions of this um, now because it's not in the plan. Uh, you should have five each one, each side. The best way to do this one is you need a couple of clamps. Again, we glue it. Please don't forget the glue. I've had kids forget it and I'll make them pull their whole project apart because the glue makes all the difference. I'm going to clamp that. Make sure it's exactly where you want it. Corner of the bench. Uh, you can't see that. Can you? That way, so it doesn't fall off. And this one, because we can, I'm going to put longer screws in. A drummer mate of mine had twin girls. Guess what he called them? And a one, and a two. You guys are killing it. Dominating this project. That's stage two done. Um, while that last little bit of glue dries, we can shape our armrests. Um, if you want to tweak them a little bit, go ahead. Just make sure you kind of have your your heads around where the supports are, the one at the back and the one towards the front. Um, oh, there's a template in the plans um, for you to follow. It's a very simple one, this one. Uh, let's go. Pick your better sides. Whatever you want to be facing up. Whatever grain pattern you like better. Um, that'll work, that'll work. This is a template I've been using for a little while. Um, I'm just going to trace it. It does have a couple holes to mark up the front. Because we've got to countersink those. Um, I usually don't countersink the one at the back, just depending on, sometimes the, the, the projects of the students, they vary a little. Um, I flipped it over, it's a mirror image of each other.
I'll trim mine off a little bit on the on the table saw. Um, by all means, I can leave them this wide. It doesn't really matter. Everything sits outside the frame, so it honestly doesn't matter. All right, let's go shape. Because these are the armrests, I will um, might take a little bit off the edges, just so they're not so sharp. Just quick sand. I'm gonna go countersink, sand, and then we're good. All right, cool kids at home. This is the best bit. This is when everything comes together. Our components, our first two stages are done. They look beautiful. We're gonna turn them into a kick-ass chair and everything else is ready to go. Armrests are ready, all our components are there. Um, if I haven't mentioned earlier, please make sure you're nailing the plan. Make sure your measurements are perfect. This is when we find out how, how, how awesome you are. Um, I'm hoping along the way you've actually bought a bunch of tools because can't have enough. All right, that's enough chat, let's do it. All right, for this bit, the first thing is we're going to attach this bad boy. And the easiest way to do it these are what it gets attached to, but I want to Hope you can see it all right. I'm gonna put a countersunk hole just here in the center, um, cause that will be our pilot hole for that center one. And um, it makes it heaps easier. All right, I'll show you, we'll do it closer. Be nice and accurate. All right, for this one, I need our pilot hole to be in the support, in the back, um, the bottom backrest support, not in the long backrest, it's in the short one. So yours should be one, uh, 140, it's a Harvard, 70, and a one in the center. Be really fussy. Um, it's fine just to use the countersunk bit, I just need the little pilot hole, so I only use kind of the drill bit part you can see. Hot tip, I forget how many we're up to now. Um, just use a screw, give yourself a little, little center punch hole. That'll make it heaps more accurate. Nice and upright. Done, that's all we need. Do it on the other side too. All right, now we're gonna attach the back. For this one, you need nice big screws, like 65, 70, something around that, but nice and big, because we don't really glue this area. The glue won't do much. Sorry my back's to you, that's not gonna work. This is not a bad part to have a mate help you out, but you should be able to line up our center hole and you know that pilot hole we just drilled and screw it in by hand. Just do the middle, just till it locates, jump on the other side. Same again. Yeah, that's it. 
Sometimes it helps to put a little guideline, a tiny line in the centre on top here so you can see. But once you've got them both, you can screw them up. Squeeze it together with both hands. And make sure she's done up tight. Again, don't bury the screw heads. Um, I'll show you the next bit. For the next two holes, uh, the next two screws, I've got this most important back height perfecting thingy board. And this is brilliant. Especially if you're by yourself. I use it to prop up where the backrest should go. So now I can put the screws in and you'll check where your pilot holes are that they do hit that centre support um, uh, section that we're after. Make sure it does. Um, I normally go one this side, one that side, so we'll finish it off. Looks good. Please make sure where your screws are going, it's through the countersunk hole and it's hitting the centre of that rail. If it doesn't, you might have to tweak this up or down just a smidge. Um, this one's not too bad. If you need to, a little bit up and down makes no difference. Uh, it's still not super strong yet, we'll put the corner blocks in next. Thanks guys, doing really well. The board length of this, out of interest, should be 510. If you're anywhere around the 510 mark, you're killing it. All right, let's go. All right, second last job. Is the slat. Um, Again, there's six mil spacing. We use our, our packers we've got. Um, with this bit, you have to do this first before you put the armrests on, because the armrests get in the way when we're drilling. Um, you've got to centre these, find the middles of the rails, mark it out on this one. I want you to bring it up closer to the far end, check that it's okay, and um, if it's exactly the same, you can mark them all out. Mark out six of them, don't do the last one. Because the last one sits here, and sometimes we've got to tweak it a tiny bit. Alright, let's go. You should have about a two centimetre overlap. Center. Check it's the same. Same. And then check that it works up at this end. Yeah, that'll be fine. So, I'm going to mark that. Obviously, I want it in the center. I want it in my three centimeters in. So, I'm going to mark that on the ends of six of them. Um, I'll be back. Uh, six of them, they'll be countersunk, they'll be sanded, and then I'll show you how to... Maybe last hot tip. Mark one, drill one, check. Check that it's gonna work at the back. Check that it's gonna work at the front. I'll be back. <laughs> 
Again, I picked the better sides, made sure I countersunk them from the top. And let's go. I've got my 40 screws again. Yeah. Um, I don't worry about gluing this one. Rubbish screw. Make sure it's in the center. Again, put the screws just below the surface. Make sure it's pushed up flush against the back. Now, use our spacers. Six again. Um, I don't think I've mentioned it. You have to make sure these are exactly 60 wide as well, like the back slats. Um, I chuck them through the thickness stuff. Um, I try to be clever and I filmed it. So uh, you've maybe already watched that or I'll put it on now. Now this bit, obviously you want to keep everything in the center. You can also line up the sides. They should be perfect. When you get to this one, it's kind of up to you how fussy you want to be, because you can cut a little bit out of this to get around the, um, the front leg. Um, once you've got your six mil gap, there's probably only a tiny bit there. Um, I don't think I'll worry about it on this one. So what I will do is I'm gonna dock it so it just fits in between here. Um, I'll chop that on the table saw. So. Make sure it's nice and centered, but because it'll stand out. I'll be back. Oh, you can do the same to this one as well, because they're the same length, but I still haven't counted some of these because I need to check something. For these ones, because they're so close to the arms, you might find it easy to use a longer Phillips head attachment. Again, at six mil. Now, why I don't want you to put the counter sinks in this yet is if we chuck them where we we're going to, halfway. There's a good chance when it goes exactly where it needs to be, it's going to miss this front rail anyway. So, this is, I like to kind of check where I'm going. I need to go there, there. So you can see. That's where it has to go, and that's the center. So it would have been wrong, so I would have needed a second piece anyway. So that's where it's going. Um, it's up to you if you want to stick to the same distance. Maybe put one in the center as well. I think I will. So get there, there, and I need one in the middle. Uh, I'll measure that one. Well, it's not that great. Let's take a break.
history lesson for you. Did you know the first French fries weren't actually cooked in France? They were cooked in Greece. <laughs> All right, rate it out of 10, leave a comment. All right, let's go. Right, they're done. While I was at it, but round the outside edge, the outside corner, so there's no out of Wait. Hey, it worked. Now we just need some armrests. Nearly there. I lied. This is the second last job. We need a support here to give our armrests something to um to rest on. Um this is the demo shape. Um, in the plans is the exact same one. And I'm gonna trace this. Trace a couple of them onto this. I'll jump on the bandsaw. Um, cut them, sand them, I'll be back. All right. So these need to be sanded and flushed. The easiest way is to give yourself a center line on this. Take into account wherever our screws go, we don't want to crash into this. So I might come down three and three and ten. On this I'm going to mark a center line here. And then I'm going to mark three and ten. So the idea is I'm going to put a pilot hole in this and countersink through this. Do it from this side as well. Just a little one. Because that's where the screws go. Like we did before, I'm going to do a little center punch and I'll put a little pilot hole. Um, it just helps me locate it. I'll be back. You guys can do that, easy. So close. Last bit is armrests. I've got my two countersunk holes here and that one out to the uh, outside edge. So you need to make sure it's centered on your leg and that one is centered in the support. So I normally will get a buddy to look down the line so you can look at both at once. Make sure you're happy. Make sure you're happy. I 
think that's going to work well. Um, make sure the back's close to where you want it. And you can put these two in. Don't bury these screws. These stand out the most. For that one at the back. Um, I would still countersink it. The idea behind countersinking, if you haven't watched the, uh, the drill demo, is um, it kind of eliminates any need, uh, any chance our timber's ever going to split. And it makes sure our, our two timbers bind together tightly. So this one you should be able to eyeball. I need it there. And there. Come in about the same distance as these so everything looks uniform. Make sure it's up against the inside. Make sure it's perfect, we're nearly done. Like that, like that. Just double checking. A bit emotional. Last screw of one of my absolute favourite projects. Um, it's always a massive hit with the kids, the staff, um, people trying to buy them off us before they even get out of the workshop. Um, I hope you've learnt heaps. I hope you've jagged some extra tools and um, I hope this is a chair you have forever. You can uh, just chill for a long time. That was an awesome day at the office. Uh, I hope you guys are happy with what you've uh, accomplished. I certainly am. Um, I love the support that you guys are showing Sawdust and Chrome. Um, we've got a coffee table, outdoor coffee table that matches this and um, they're a good combo. I hope you jagged a few tools. A few good tools, a bit of time, a bit of timber. There's nothing we can't do together. I hope you Garage is getting full. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're um, dragging the kids into the garages as well and um, hanging out with them. This is actually a gift for a friend of mine. It's Christmas coming up. And um, one of my staff members, Beck, thoroughly, thoroughly deserves a, a cool chair like this. So I'm going to take it around to her place. Um, again, if you love what we're up to, please do the likes and subscribes and the notification stuff. Um, there's always more coming. Um, again, I appreciate the support. I love you guys. Um, I'll see you around.
All right, cool kids, last bit. Uh, we're going to sort out our bugger. How many takes? confident you guys at home have been killing it and let's put our chair together all right um, I don't know why I spent let's go you know that is cool no right, I'm back that's trash though g'day guys welcome to another sawdust and chrome Today I'm going to introduce these Adirondack, Adirondack, wrong. I'm going to introduce these Adirond, Adirondack. Do that again. Adirondack. <laughs> Ad, Adirondack. 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 Adirondack.